In today's video, we're gonna be checking out the new Griot's Garage Boss Short Pressure Washer Gun. Now we're gonna get into the usability of this thing, comparing it to other units, but two things I wanna cover right off the bat. One is the design of it. It's very, very different than any other uh, professional style, you know, heavy duty short pressure washer gun. I have to be honest, when I first saw it, I thought kind of like, whoa, I, I don't know, it wasn't my favorite. I thought it was not the best looking. Uh, but it has grown on me. It doesn't bother me at all anymore, to be perfectly honest. Um, still very different than your standard, normal pressure washer gun. Um, and the trigger is definitely different and that kind of makes it look a little bit cheap to me personally. But I digress, uh, it doesn't bother me nearly as much anymore. Number two though is the price. This thing is coming in at a price tag of $129.99. Yes, they use stainless steel components, swivels, all that kind of good stuff. However, is it worth $129? In my personal opinion, no, it's not. When you can buy something like this at a fraction of the price, like a quarter, third of the price, it, this just doesn't fit in my detailing arsenal at that price. But we're gonna do a lot of fun things. We're gonna do film a little wash video using this kind of ASMR style, so stay tuned for that. And then again, we will weigh this out, look at all the interior components, all that kind of good stuff. So here we go. Okay, so using this unit, um, it's comfortable in the hand. It is a larger unit, um, overall footprint, right? When you look at it compared to here, when you look at it compared to the Obsessed Garage, which is also extremely expensive, still bigger than that. Uh, the Active is nice and compact. Um, let's see here, the, the new McKillens, right? It's bigger than all of these. Um, so if you have really large hands, this may be a great choice for you. Now, as far as the trigger pull goes, um, it's not bad. It's not as light as something like an MTM SGS 28. It's definitely not as light as that. Um, and then like with the Obsessed Garage, it's got that little click in it. And I think, I personally don't like that, but I think the reasoning behind that is once you get past that, you don't need as much pressure to hold the trigger back. So it is comfortable. You don't get any fatigue. While I was using this, yeah, my hand got a little bit of fatigue. Not bad. That's really like nitpicky and complainy. It's not bad at all. But just something to note, you do have to apply a little more pressure to hold it. Now, right in their instruction manual here, guys, I'm just gonna read this to you because it talks about the features and right off the bat, they say this unit is precision crafted, premium components combined uh, to deliver world-class performance, ensuring exceptional reliability and efficiency for all your pressure washing needs. And that brings me to point number one that I found while I was using this, and it was just a mistake on my end. I, I missed, did something, but um, I think it's important to know when they're talking about exceptional quality and precision manufacturing, um, if you look up close, they have this locking mechanism here, right? Typically, you're gonna have this style where this little latch flips back, right? Locks into place, you cannot pull that trigger, right? It's just a safety mechanism. I rarely ever use it anyway. So this really isn't that big of a deal. But again, just talking about the overall, um, I, this, okay, so 
here it is, right? You push it down, now you can use it. You push it back from the other side, push it back to level, and it locks it in place. But if you just pull a little bit harder, so it's locked in place right now, doesn't lock. So something is, is slipping there. That's locked, but if you pull, so I don't know, let's open it up. I haven't opened this up at all yet, so we're gonna look at this together and see exactly what's going on with that, what's slipping past that, and then the rest of the uh, components. All right guys, so the overall design of this thing, um, again, I'm, it's not my favorite design, but I think a lot of the details that they put in it are nice. So you do have the rubberized backing, rubberized up here says the boss, obviously part of their boss lineup. Uh, and then the grip back here has this texture to it and it's actually, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but it is actually the Griot's Garage uh, little car logo. Uh, this one here, kind of in, embossed all the way through that so it's cool um, then it also says have fun in your garage which is always a nice little motivating factor right um, so anyways we're going to open this up there's one two three four five six seven eight screws and it is a t20 style a little star style um, head so t20 we're going to go ahead and just remove these i will go ahead and fast forward this for you guys so you don't have to wait around for me to unscrew All right guys, so let's go ahead and open this up. So, separates really easily. Um, now, okay, here's the stop button, right? So there's the piece there. Uh, let's see how this thing operates. If you put it in there, yeah, that's, that's why. Okay, so all it is, is if you look on the side here, these two thin pieces here, hopefully you guys can see this. I don't know if you can, hopefully you can. So this is hollowed out and there's a side, two little side pieces, right? Really thin. And this just blocks right in one of those. So you apply pressure and it flexes apparently and slips right past it. So that's why uh, it is slipping past. Now, as you see, uh, the whole thing with this thing is supposed to be all stainless, st stainless steel components and it looks to be. Now, I know you can do magnet uh, testing, but even, you know, there's different classes of stainless steel and even the higher end ones sometimes still have some uh, magnetizing ability. I don't know if that's a word, but sometimes they will, a magnet will attract to it still. So there's different types of metal in the stainless and that can happen. So I'm not going to do that. So let's go ahead and remove this. So in order to remove the trigger, it looks like it's just on this pin right here. So let's get that removed. Okay. That all comes completely apart. So you have your pin here, the pin just holds the trigger in place. Then you have your basic uh, style where here where this gets compressed. There's a little metal piece within here that, you know, just for longevity, it's not going to wear through the plastic that compresses and that's it. Uh, the swivel is nice and they do try and um, sink it in as much as possible. I mean, you do feel, it feels consistent all the way around. You can feel a little bit of a grinding, but not bad at all. Uh, it seems nice. Uh, there is exposed thread there. Um, some other units like the active, um, they worked hard to get that completely recessed in to not have any exposed thread. Same thing with the Obsessed Garage. Uh, Obsessed Garage one is more expensive than this one. The Active though, I think comes in around 80 bucks um, and it does have a swivel as well that's all recessed and nice. Moving on from there, I don't know if there's much more we can say about this. Um, the Quick Connect on the front is very nice. It is stamped also with the Griot's logo. Um, so. I don't know, it, it's a nice feeling um, quick connect. Kind of closer to the Mosmatic, like appearance wise, that seems like that's what they're going for. Um, yeah, it, I mean, it springs back very nicely. It's, it's a good, good quick connect. Uh, the active, I mean, I don't know. I don't have any issues with any of these quick connects. Over time, they can get kind of gummed up, but I think any of them will do that eventually, especially if you're using, not using uh, spot free water just the contamination and stuff from the water can start to gum stuff up. Um, but I don't know, that's it. Um, it is all stamped out, so all these spots should sit recessed in there, kind of holding it into place really well, which is a nice thought, nice design feature there. Um, but again, man, this is a little bit of a bummer to me. Again, I, I don't really care because I don't use a, uh, I don't use the locking mechanism anyway. It just kind of, that was the first thing, you know, first day using it, I, I feel it slip past that. I'm like, well, is the it precision manufacturing? I don't know, because I don't know. It, it's just a little bit of a letdown there. Let's go ahead and put this back together, slide this in. Actually, I might have to take this out. There we go. 
there we go. I mean, I gotta be honest, the way all this fits in is very tight even before screwing it all together. So they definitely did a good job with that. Let's see on this part. Uh, yeah, this slits in there like that. So hopefully you guys can see that. It sits right in this little sleeve, perfect. And then when you compress, uh, so right here, let me see if I can get this to focus for you and show you. Right there, it's, it's blocking it, okay? And then when you compress it, it moves to the inside of it and then this functions. But again, it is sliding past for me if you pull hard. All right guys, so for performance rating on this thing, it does stay on right here. Uh, 12 US gallons per minute, 5,000 PSI, max temperature of 300 degrees. Great, um, that's all great, but again, Rio's is a car detailing company, right? They're, they make car detailing products, stuff for your garage, for washing your car. We're not operating 5,000 PSI, so I don't think that that's needed. I know that's a pretty standard thing, and also 12 gallons per minute, obviously two gallons is right around what we get with most of our pressure washers. The active is rated at 5,000 PSI, 12 gallons, 300 degrees, so same, same deal. Um, the Mosmatic, same 5,012, same exact thing. The Ridge washer, this thing comes in at like 35 bucks uh, and also has a locking mechanism, right? So you can lock it out like normal, okay? So you cannot pull the trigger. Um, and then it also has a locking mechanism where you can pull it, push this in, and it stays pl uh, pulled in so that you can actually, you don't have to worry about that fatigue, right? You don't have to pull the trigger at all. It's already there and then you just click it to release it. So really cool. Um, and this one is also rated, let's see here, 45 liters a minute, 5,000 PSI, 45 liters, what is this one? Yeah, so same, same deal. The new McKillens, um, a lot of people have complained about the price on this. I think it's, it is a more expensive unit. It's not as expensive as the Mosmatic, it's not as expensive as the Boss. It is more expensive, I believe, than the Active. I think this one's 100 bucks, I can't remember if I'm right about that or not, but the, the trigger is extremely easy to pull, similar to an MTM M, uh, SGS. Very, very easy to pull, very comfortable in the hand for me. And they have the integrated storage, uh, nozzle storage. They have stainless steel quick connects and swivel out the back. So again, at 100 bucks on this um, and people complaining about that, this one at 130. For me, if I was gonna go with one or the other, if they were the exact same price, I would still go the McKillens with the added features of the nozzle uh, storage and all that kind of good stuff. The ease of pulling it. Um, so I would still go there. The uh, Active, if you want a nice com compact unit, again, same kind of thing. Also, they do have, you can hear it, they have that ball in there. Now this is the original one, they actually updated it. I can't remember if that's still in there or not. But again, similar to the Obsessed Garage, I believe it's just to make it easier to pull once you pass that point. So who is this for? I don't know. Uh, I think people with large hands. I think that's a good choice for someone with large hands. Um, outside of that, I think there's better options out there at better price points. Um, I hate to talk about a, a product from Griot's that way. I don't review a lot of Griot's products. I've basically covered this and their Boss Foam Cannon. And their Boss Foam Cannon, I like very much. One of my top three, I say the MJJCs, both of them, the SV3 and the Pro V2. Um, and then the, the MTM, the original one, I don't like the wide mouth one. I think the, they cut cost too much on the wide mouth adapter. Um, and then the Griots, those are my top foam cannons. Um, this, on the other hand, doesn't make my top list for sure. So that's it for today's video, guys. I hope that video helps you. Please make sure to like the video. Make sure you're subscribed, turn on that notification bell, and we will see you guys on the next one.